This is the Hue 2 RGB lighting kit and ambient RGB lighting kit. Let's jump in and take a look. So today, as I said, we're actually looking at two different kits. So the first one is the RGB lighting kit, which is more for kind of internal. So putting it inside your chassis and making the whole inside of it glow. And yes, we will actually be building up a whole system in the NZXT H700i and trying to fulfill that whole kind of ecosystem. Now, other than that, we have the ambient RGB lighting kit, which is more sort of based around putting it onto the back of your monitor and really giving you that immersive feeling. Now, these are both branded under the Hue 2 kind of moniker, but how does Hue 2 differ from Hue Plus? Well, first we need to actually have a look at what Hue Plus has to offer and now what Hue 2 has to offer. The strips themselves on the Hue 2 kit contain 10 LEDs, which is the same as the Hue Plus kit, but apparently they have faster response times and better synchronization with other Hue 2 accessories. Also, the controller is smaller due to the more advanced and smaller microprocessor. The number of channels have doubled from two to four, so now you can have up to 160 addressable LEDs inside your case, compared to just 80 for the Hue Plus kit. Up to six accessories per channel are supported, with a maximum of four LEDs or five fans. You can now also mix and match the AER RGB fans and strips on the same lighting channel. Unlike the Hue Plus, you couldn't actually do this. Although we don't actually have them here, there is also the Hue 2 Underglow accessory to light the desk beneath your case. This even comes with a PCIe bracket for cable routing, and you can get a cool set of LED cable combs as well. So let's start by actually having a look at the box. So it comes in typical kind of NZXT fashion, really crisp, really sort of clear uh, packaging. So uh, NZXT Hue 2 RGB lighting kit, it's an advanced PC lighting system, and it just gives you a general kind of glimpse of you know, what's going on. Turn it around to the back, you can see it just gives us some information on you know, what you're actually able to do with it, as well as you know, how you can control it through the CAM software, which we will go through in a little bit as well. Also mention system requirements and specifications as well. So let's start by opening it up and see exactly what we get inside. So inside we do get um, an instruction manual, uh, basically just talks through how to connect everything up, what comes included in the sort of component list, and you know, everything that you're gonna need to, to know to sort of get started. Other than that, we get the hub itself, which as we did mention is a little bit smaller now. So we will sort of talk through the hub and exactly what all the connections are, if there's any lights, buttons, that kind of thing as well. Uh, we do get the LED cables, which I'll talk through in a minute, but let's talk through all of the extension cables. So extension cable wise, uh, we get one, two, three, and four. And they actually look to be quite sort of lengthy in size. Uh, there's also a fair few screws for obviously mounting the controller hub, as well as some Velcro uh, sort of 3M sticky back uh, pieces of Velcro. If, if you sort of want to put it in different places. Now we are also told that the hub has a magnet in there, which is going to make it even easier to actually mount it inside of your chassis. Now, other extensions that we have are obviously the four pin um, sort of standard 12 volt RGB uh, extensions. So there looks to be sort of different sizes of these ones. And then we just have some sort of simple extensions uh, that you, will take you sort of female to male. Uh, I'm not actually sure whether these are removable. I will try finding out in a little bit. But uh, yeah, you get all of the various different extension cables, uh, USB cable as well with micro USB and a USB 2.0 header on there as well. And sadly, you do get the actual mains power, which I say sadly because it goes into a Molex. It wouldn't have been that difficult to change this over to SATA, but I don't know, maybe there's a, a reason why they've done it. Other than that, if we open up uh, this separate piece of packaging that came with it, then we can see uh, all of the LED strips and, uh, and take a look at the different sizes that come included. So included, you do get four LED strips. Now these are 300 mil in size and they include up to, uh, well, they include 10 LEDs in total. Now the good thing is with these is it gives you a little bit of flexibility with kind of, you know, extending it in your system. Now they are magnetic as well, as you can probably see. If I actually attach that to there, you'll see it picks them up quite nicely. So you have the sort of, you know, flexibility to put them inside your chassis and it will just cling on to kind of where you want it to. There are the other option of, uh, if we take the ends off, you can see that we have this 3M tape on there as well, which you can simply peel back and then you have kind of sticky back 
um, sort of adhesive. Now the good thing is with these is even though they are only 300 mil in length, you can actually extend them out sort of one by one. So if you take the ends off, which are protected with these little caps, you can then take this and simply plug it together. And this then allows you to have a 600 mil kit. So depending on sort of where you want it in your case, you may have quite a large case. And what you want to do is kind of extend it around certain areas. So you may want to put two together. But the problem with that is what will happen is essentially all you're doing is making an extension. So whatever lighting patterns you have on this strip, which will be connected into the hub, will happen on the sort of adjoining strip. Now, the beauty of that is with the controller, you can actually plug in sort of the strips into various different uh, connectors on there. So you could have this as kind of one strip with one lighting pattern or one lighting zone. And then the next one you could have as a completely different lighting zone. And then the next one as another lighting zone. So there are up to sort of four channels on the uh, lighting kit. So if you wanted to, you could have four completely separate zones and you could have red green blue and orange you could have it sort of dashing across static breathing and you could have this one sort of maybe near your CPU and what you could actually have it do is change color as it gets to a certain temperature there's lots of facilities you can do in the cam software which we will talk through as well in regards to sort of you know the different lighting effects you can have and kind of the full control you can get over your system something that's uh, I guess a little bit more visual uh, and aesthetic uh, than just you know looking at your CPU temperature or your FPS or something like that. This will actually give you a bit of a visual aid. So really really nice uh, quality with this as well. And I do love the fact that yeah you can join sort of join them up, have them kind of you know all collectively. If you really wanted, you could join all four of these together and connect it into the control box. It's also worth noting that all LEDs on the strips are fully addressable. This means that all ten of the LEDs per strip can be set to a completely different color or pattern. As I said, they're all powered by the same cam software and can sync patterns with the Hue 2 ambient kit that we also have here. So looking at the connectors actually on the hub, you can see that we've got our general sort of power, which as I say is powered by Molex, which is a bit disappointing. That goes into there and then this can connect into your computer. You also have the micro USB, which will be the next one to plug in. And then that goes off into your USB header. This just gives you kind of that control over everything through the software. Now connecting the strips, you can see that we've got two connectors on this side, as well as another two down here. So it's entirely up to you which one you use. Uh, they are labeled one, two, three, and four. So if you are looking to do sort of certain effects, then obviously you'd want to, to go with number one and you can sort of have like a flash and dash effect where it'll flash between sort of number one onto number two, onto number three, and onto number four. So you can actually kind of, you know, route this inside your chassis the way that you want. And it's just a matter of taking the cables plugging that in and then on this end you've got the four pin and simply plugging that into the LED strip itself and then once you've done that you're basically complete and you all you need to do is obviously plug this into power this into the USB header on your motherboard and then you can control everything through the cam software now one thing I do want to mention about the controller itself is Anyone who has the original Hue Plus uh, devices, it will actually work with the Hue 2 controller, but it's worth noting that you can't actually use the Hue Plus and the Hue 2 accessories on the same channel. So for instance, we could plug in one of our LED strips. So if I was to grab uh, this one, you could plug this into say number one, for instance. But that means that if you have an older Hue Plus accessory, you can't connect in to the, this particular strip. You'd have to go into either channel two, three, or four. For the most part though, I think anyone who has the older stuff, if they are looking to upgrade, they're probably going to be looking at kind of, you know, having a complete overhaul. So they'd end up getting rid of their Hue Plus stuff and then maybe moving everything up to the Hue 2. I can sort of maybe see why NZXT did this. Uh, it's obviously good business practice to try and get people to, to upgrade without sort of, you know, um giving them a reason to spend more money for not many more features. So I guess in a roundabout way, this is why NZXT would have done it, hoping that people would upgrade to the Hue 2 system from the Hue Plus and kind of have to, you know, buy a, a few more things to, to get that ecosystem kind of going. But it's still frustrating from a consumer standpoint because there might be certain aspects of the Hue 2 kit that you want, like the ambient RGB lighting kit that you now can't use with the Hue Plus stuff 
if you're running out of channels and things like that. You know, there, there's there's lots of sort of different things, um, I, I guess, from a consumer standpoint and from a brand standpoint as to why this would actually happen. As I mentioned, this is magnetic as well, but other ways of mounting it, it does come with four different screws and then also some sticky back Velcro as well. So they have given you a lot of options to mount this inside your chassis. And of course, we will actually show you in some lovely kind of B-roll glam and everything exactly how this will look in a H700i. We've actually kitted it out with um, their 850 watt power supply and some RGB fans so hopefully yeah that will turn out really really nice and uh and whatnot as well. So now moving on to the ambient light kit, I'm actually more excited about this because there's a lot of ways of sort of adding LED strips into your system. Obviously NZXT take it one step further with the amount of customization that you get, but ambient lighting, you know, hasn't really been done that much. So you have like Philips with their ambient light uh, actual monitors and TVs. So they actually include it as standard, but this allows you to put it onto any monitor, any TV, anything like that. So it comes in two different sizes. So if you have a monitor that's 21 inch to 26 inch, there's one kit or the kit that we've got, which is for monitors that are 27 inch to 35 inch. Obviously it all comes down to how long the actual LED strips are. Now talking about the size of the strips, so um, there's various different sizes. So if you have the 21 to 26 inch kit, you're gonna get two 300 mil LED strips and four uh, 250 mil strips and then two 200 mil strips. If you've got the bigger kit like we have, then instead you get four 300 mil uh, strips and four 250 mil strips. So you don't actually need the, the really small ones because you're getting a lot larger ones. Other than that, the box is pretty much the same as what we saw on the other kit. Just kind of gives you an idea as to how it can look on the back of your monitor. Uh, it does sort of say uh, up here as well what size monitors it's for. And then on the back, again, we get system requirements, specifications, how it can look and controlling it for the software and a little bit about, you know, how easy it is to install and things like that as well. So opening this one up, I'm not sort of going to see that it's going to be too dissimilar from the other RGB lighting kit that we saw, just, you know, a different way of plugging it in. Because while the other kit plugs into a USB header and a Molex connector, Molex. Uh, this actually plugs into the mains power. So, I mean, in theory, there's nothing actually stopping you using this for other means. So, for instance, this is kind of aimed at, you know, having it installed on the back of your monitor. But I don't even know if you can see, but behind me, there's a nice ambient glow. And that's actually a Lifex strip that we use on the back of the desk just to kind of, you know, light up the background. There's nothing stopping you sort of using this for that kind of effect. So inside you do get um, a product update notice saying they've made improvements to provide you with a better user experience. The 50 mil extension cables are replaced with 150 mil cables for easier application. So that's quite nice. Uh, they're giving you something extra. You get the suggested configuration. Now this is really handy because if you've never done anything like this before, uh, this is gonna sort of, yeah, it's gonna be really handy for you because it's actually telling you, depending on the size of your monitor, how they kind of think you should be laying things out because yeah, you might be a little bit in the dark. Dark, get it? It's a lighting pun. So uh, yeah, you can see basically that if you have a 34 to 35 inch widescreen, then they suggest that you have a 300 mil at the top, uh, at the side, then along, the then into the 250, into the 250 and so forth. It's just a nice sort of reference guide. Again, you get the instruction manual, which kind of talks through, you know, how to connect everything up, connect it to the hub, uh, exactly what you get included. There's quite a lot with this one because what they've actually done, where it plugs into a mains power, they've actually got it so that you can uh, essentially uh, use it in various different countries. So the hub itself, um, I'll be honest, looks exactly the same as the other one, apart from it's missing two connections on the side. So this has only actually got two channels. So we'll unbox that in a minute. Inside here is the LED strips, which I'm gonna struggle to get into, but we'll go through them in a minute as well. And then we have two more boxes, which I'm guessing is kind of for the mains power. So opening this up, you get lots of silica gel, so, you know, keeps things nice and fresh. So you get the plug itself, which instead of just, you know, NZXT are based in America and their products, as far as I know, are developed and, and whatnot in America, but made in Taiwan. Uh, instead of just giving you a US adapter, they've actually really thought about this. So you have uh, a general kind of, you know, swap out plug. And then we have various different connections. So we have everything for sort of um, Europe, uh, Australia, uh, America, and then obviously the UK. And it's just a simple matter of uh, plugging this in and off you go. And this will plug into the hub. So again, it's got the, the similar kind of connection that we saw on the other kit and off you go. Other than that, inside here, we get all of our various different cables to connect the LED strips up. So again, the hub itself, uh, if I just check it, 
is magnetic and other sort of ways of mounting it is through uh, they don't actually give you screws on this one because obviously it's going to go on the back of your monitor so you wouldn't want to screw it in instead you get the 3m sticky backed velcro and then you also get these little sticky backed clips as well uh, so just another way of you know mounting it so they really have kind of thought about you know the various ways that people are likely to mount this on their monitor you also then get the uh, actual connectors to plug into the hub and then plug into the led strip and then you get your extensions as well and then you've got your usb cables so unlike the normal uh, rgb lighting kit this one still plugs into a micro usb uh, but instead goes into a standard usb port instead of a usb header so i'm going to unbox the led cables uh, take the hub out and then we can show you exactly what the connections are on that and the different sizes of the led strips as well so let's get everything connected up. Uh, before we do, obviously these are the strips. Again, they are magnetic. So if I take one off, you can see how magnetic, magnetic it is. Uh, four of the 250 mil and then four of the 300 mil. So pretty much everything you'd need to kind of, you know, get going with it. Uh, with the controller, as I mentioned, it is very similar to the one that comes with the normal RGB sort of internal lighting kit, apart from there's no um, channels on the side. So you only have the two channels. Again, it's just a simple matter of getting the cable, plugging it in, taking the cap off, and then plugging that into the LED strip. So if we just take one of these off, it is actually labeled on the strip as well. So you can see that we have a wire W ground uh, DIN and then plus five volt. So you just wanna make sure that the arrows all line up correctly to the plus five volt. And then once that's done, you can take the power and plug that in and then take your USB connector and simply plug that in. So when you first load up cam, you can see that uh, it greets you with the first section, which is all to do with kind of monitoring your graphics card, uh, your processor, your memory and your storage. So everything from temperatures to uh, how much load is going through it, uh, what the clock speeds are and so forth. Moving through the menus, you can see that we get some more information on exactly what kind of spec system you have. So if anyone you know, needs to ask you about uh, the various components that you have in your system, you could easily just view it and tell them exactly what it is. This is especially handy when troubleshooting. The next section you do have to uh, log in to, to get. We haven't done that for the purposes of this video, but it just gives you your uh, frames per second performance when uh, actually playing a game, similar to what Fraps does. The next section is to do with GPU overclocking. So uh, as the name suggests, this is where you can push the power limits, the core clock and the memory clock speeds of your GPUs. The next section is to do with fan speed. So uh, obviously we have a Kraken in here, so we can go onto the Kraken and we can adjust the fan curve, uh, the profile on the, uh, if it's a GPU, uh, CPU, or if it's a liquid cooler. And you can actually change the profile from silent performance or as I said, you can actually do your own custom fan curve. Okay, so the next section comes under lighting and this is where you can control everything. So you, as you can see, we have a lot of it set to green at the moment. If we choose say the logo, the ring and channel one, we can then change that to pulse and we can change it to red. We can then click on apply and you can see the settings that have actually kind of changed on the system. So with some of the lighting on the uh, CPU cooler as well as this upper lighting. Uh, if we then select all and deselect, we can then go channel two and channel three and channel four, which is one of our fans. And we can set that to pulse and we will set that one to purple and click apply. And again, you can see that everything just changes a, a little bit inside the system. Lastly, we've got the ambient lighting. So this is obviously what we put on the back of the monitor. And again, you just get kind of the same effects. So we can go from a fixed light to a pulsing light and we can put it in red, for instance, just to kind of, you know, give you something really nice. You can get super rainbow, 
which will just kind of go through various different colors. Now, there's so many different effects on here. Like I said earlier, I'm not actually going to be going through absolutely everything, but there is other ones you can do, such as smart lighting based on your CPU, GPU temperature, your frames per second, or you can do things with your audio, so it will kind of be reactive, or even just your game. So depending on sort of what game you're playing, you can set different profiles, and then you can sort of have it uh, basically react to different things that are happening from within the game. The other parts of the software really uh, away from the lighting come down to uh, measuring your power supply and the um, sort of wattage that it's actually drawing at the time. Drivers, so it will help you kind of, you know, uh, detect what devices you have plugged in that are obviously NZXT based and then tell you if there's any drivers that need updating and that kind of thing. And then there is adaptive um, noise reduction as well. So lots of features within Cam. Like I said, I didn't really want to go through too much of it. So hopefully this is enough to kind of give you a general idea. So there you have it. Um, I'm pretty, I don't know, impressed, I guess, with what NZXT have actually been able to do with the Hue 2 kit. I never actually had a real chance to really get down and dirty with the Hue Plus. Uh, I'd seen it at shows like CES and Computex and had like a really brief play with it, but never really kind of, you know, had a chance to sort of really delve into trying to make it personal to me. And that's what I guess this allows you to do. If you're the sort of person who really likes RGB, then yeah, you could go with a whole kind of all out unicorn puking rainbows kind of effect. Or if you just want something a little bit more subtle, just a nice white effect, you can do something like that. You really can tailor it for your own personal needs, which is something that I actually really, really like. The fact that you don't actually need to have NZXT based um, products in your kind of overall system is another, I guess, really important thing. You could have a completely different brand, chassis, motherboard, everything, and still actually use these with the strips. And again, whether you want to or not, the ambient kit isn't exactly restricted to, to use on a monitor. You could use it, like I said, with, like we do with the Lifex strips at the back. You could have something, you know, glowing at the back of your, your desk or something like that. The, the possibilities really are endless. And I love the fact that, you know, the cam software, I guess, is now at a point where it's matured so much that it's got better and better. I remember first seeing the cam software many, many years ago, and it was still kind of in its infantile stage. And it just had, I guess, some a few teething issues. But obviously over time, it shows that NZXT have kind of listened to consumers and kind of given them what they want. And that's exactly what they've done with the Hue 2 kit as well. They've listened to kind of what people want with the Hue Plus kit and added, you know, the ability to I guess connect in more and have things on different channels and being able to kind of, you know, really make everything either collectively together and having everything where all of the lighting effects are kind of, you know, together and as one in unison or having the ability to kind of do everything separately, which really, again, just adds that extra depth to personalization when it comes to your own rig, uh, not just on the internal side, but also on the external, uh, on the back of your monitor, on the back of your desk, wherever you want to put it. Let us know in the comments section below what you actually think. Are you one for sort of, you know, RGB lighting? And, you know, is this the sort of kit that you'd actually look to, to go out and buy yourself? Personally, I, I think it's absolutely fantastic and I really, really love what NZXT have done. And I'm, I guess, hoping for maybe a few more accessories to come out. As I mentioned, there are the cable combs and other things like the kind of under desk lighting uh, that you can buy. But where do they kind of go from here? Is there anything else? Maybe actually stepping out a little bit more from kind of the computer realm and going more into professional lighting, actually having, you know, bayonet bulbs or Edison type screw bulbs, that kind of thing. You know, if you could kind of harmonize that and link it all into the, the kind of same ecosystem, I think NZXT could be onto a real winner. There you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. Subscribe, hit that like button, comment below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. The number of... The number up. <laughs> Ready? Yep. We might not want to do that while we're filming. It's worth noting, like I mentioned earlier, there are Ugh, just spat everywhere. Let's do that again. Damn it.